Greg Sullivan, God damn it, you're looking sexy out there on the beach. Just another beautiful day in sunny Southern California, my brother. That tells me it's time for an audit. Over there, over there, around somewhere, there he is, right over there. I'm Glenn House. Welcome to Friday Night Audit. So excited to be back in my home studio. Though I wish I was at the Fairmont Olympic Hotel in this brand new, beautiful lobby bar. Maybe one day I'll get there. Hey, what's up, everybody? Good to see you all tuning in right now for us on the audit. So, Greg Sullivan, it is exciting to be back here week after week. Just yes. for all of those tuning in for the first time, what Craig is Friday Night Audit all about? Except bad. William Shatner impersonations. It's all about the lighter side of hospitality, a little light conversation, a little laughter, hopefully, uh, and us crashing and burning. And our number one fan, Amy, is here. Hey, well, there'll definitely be laughter. Unfortunately, they'll be laughing at us, not with us. But tonight's very exciting because we've got a vodka drink. I love the vodka drink. All of a sudden, I feel like uh, maybe we should be playing some uh, Chumbawamba or something like that. Plus, we're discussing what it's like getting back on the road for business and sharing how that affects us when we take our personal vacations. Plus, right. we'll give the crew a reason to use the uh, Grumpy Glenn hashtag over there and lots and lots more. But first, a little message from Producer Dave, don't you think? Do you want to hear from yeah. me? Yeah, let's bring Producer Dave. Uh, everyone always wants to hear from me, but uh, yeah. you know, I'm sorry. I'm looking a little disheveled today. I'm looking a little more to the to the Glenn side of things than I typically do. Oh, well, I was going to say that's the best you've ever looked. On this day, <laughs> but, uh, hey, my, blue, leash, my blue fleece, my T-shirt, my hair is all messed up. But it's honestly, it's for a good reason. And unfortunately, I uh, I have to step away early for the show today because uh, some good news. Obviously, as we talked about last week, I did secure myself a new hotel job, and we are scheduled to open up next Thursday. Nice. So employees are coming back on Monday to get all reestablished and get set up. We are super super excited about that, but. That, of course, means the team is here late doing a deep clean, making sure the hotel is prepped and ready to welcome those employees back with a nice, fresh, squeaky hotel. So I probably do need to go and be actually a good employee for once. Head out, Listen, help them. You were never a good employee when you worked with us all the time. Why should you start <laughs> doing that now? Well, as Anthony, Anthony says almost every day on No Vacancy, uh, it all starts at the top. So... I'm looking at you, Glenn. I'm looking at you. I understand what that means because I am the last. I'm staying out of this. Yeah. <laughs> but again, have a great show. Uh, you have a great, great guest today. A really great chick. I'm really, really sorry I'm going to miss it, but I do want to make sure we get the hotel ready for the employees. Yeah, so if we finish up, if we finish up, uh, you know, early enough, I will come back here and make sure the place hasn't burned down. Bye. Uh, and if uh, I'm not back in time, Amy, Suzanne. Uh, Carol, all of you guys, Daniel, please keep these guys in check because I have no faith that Greg, <laughs> Craig and Glenn can hold it down. All right. Thank you. We can't. You it's going to crash and burn. Your words were inspiring, and we wish you lots of good luck tonight. Have fun. Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll get back soon. And bring the whole crew. Next week, I'll be back. All right. See you later. Take care, brother. Take care, David. All right. So, um, well, that's a relief. I'm so We're left up to our own devices. We've got no supervision. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> the shenanigans are going to start. <laughs> oh, boy. Speaking of shenanigans, Craig. We've got a great guest today. Wait. He's back. We've got. Uh-oh. Sorry. Oh, look at that. Producer Dave has to produce for one more second. Glenn, before you start drinking your drink, play the video. Yes. Yes. I will remember to play that video. Don't you worry about it, Dave. But sadly, you're going to go and you're going to miss that brilliant hitting of a button, which will start a video. So sorry. All right. <laughs> All right. Great. I feel I feel. Bad. So Go on. <laughs> no worries at all. So today, we've got one of the best people in the hotel industry joining us. We've got Lori Gardner, Intercontinental Hotels and Resorts, Franchise Development, Works Southern California, Arizona and Southern Nevada, and she has been in the industry nine, well, been with Intercontinental for nine years, so she has seen two downturns in her tenure at IHG. And Lori Gardner is one of the best franchise development people in the industry. Lori, welcome to the show. How Hello. are you? Hello. How are you guys? 
I'm so excited. That was quite, Good quite to see the you. intro. I hope I can live up to that. <laughs> You always do. I have no fear of that at all. You always live up to it. My, my, my idea, just disappoint them early and often so that nobody has any. Well, you know, if you start drinking early enough, everything seems awesome after that. Well, I've got some good news. Producer Dave might not be here, but I've got a much better producer in the background. Yes, we got the orange. <gasps> Yeah, well, I love it. You that. got the oranges. Yay. I know my stack of oranges is going to be much more entertaining than Dave ever has been. So nice. I'm about that. We'll be right back to you, Orange Cam, in just a second. So <laughs> I still I still can't believe that you've got a sharp instrument, okay? I I am totally dumbfounded with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh. Well, apparently whoever let me have it is entirely dumb that I found it. So we'll see what happens. You mean your background didn't have the knife just there waiting for you? I, I know. Maybe, maybe I <laughs> you just have. reach back there and get it. <laughs> Too Fortunately, I have a real background, or maybe unfortunately, I can just go grab a knife. Although I do have you. <laughs> now that's a knife. Serrated, serrated works really yeah. well. On Excellent. Orange. All right. So we're going to get to a little bit uh, about Lori over the drinks, but God dang, I'm not going to forget if the Dave reminds me. What time is it? Well, it's video time. That's right. It's cocktail time, everybody. It's time for our guests to tell us what kind of cocktails they want to make. So Craig and I are too lazy to think of our own. So, Lori, <laughs> what are we drinking this week? And let's bring back on our the orange can. Dun, 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 dun. So <laughs> we are having a screwdriver, which um, is not any ordinary screwdriver. So here in Arizona, all of the citrus fruit is at its peak. Right. And um, come the end of March, you got to get all of it off the tree uh, so that all the blossoms can turn into fruit for next year. So I just got done picking all of the oranges off my tree. I have been juicing like a maniac. And what better way to do but pair it with a little... Tito's oh. and because it can be kind of sweet and kind of heavy yep. yeah I trump you mister trump yes ya. you did yes you did <laughs> um that's just for tonight though we're good <laughs> yeah this is just, that I, is after, nice uh, blend. you know last week I uh, I was afraid of well two weeks ago I was afraid I was gonna run out so I, I want to make sure I had enough of tonight think I'm gonna have enough I, I don't know what you may it? run out of oranges, but you probably won't run out of tea. You know, squirt 400 ounces of vodka and one squirt of orange. Is that <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Just for the color, and get the True. orange in there. <laughs> True. Well, and I do uh, put a little club soda. I happen to have LaCroix today um, just because it gets a little sweet and a little heavy. And we like, you know, kind of beach drink. It's 92 degrees here today. So um, we will be making something refreshing. Yeah, it's in there the go. 30s here, so I'm looking forward to <laughs> really cool me, cool me down. <laughs> you need, you need. Oh, I like that your orange, your orange cans all set up there. Uh, That's a little shameless plug on the no vacancy, uh, um, the no vacancy mask there. I got us a, a special Friday night audit swag uh, that I bought for us oh, soon, but so I had to use this one, which I just got. I'm excited. I'm preparing for the Hunter Hotel Investment Conference. I want to look. Uh, We'll look all sexy, ready for the rage. Oh, there you nice. go. Nice, uh, nice. Mm -hmm. Hey, the pull rage, out the black not one. The you rave. Have. What's that? Pull out the black face mask you have. Uh, that seems really <laughs> Oh, do do tell. <laughs> I can't reach anything right now. I'm on a I'm on a cord over here. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm thirsty. Someone. Well, Craig's cheating. He went ahead. Now that you did that, Craig, you at least have to hold up your cup and show me what it says. Woo! Yes. Nice. Yes, I have got the official Holiday Inn Express Yeti tumbler, and. I've got the Avid Hotel Yeti tumbler for my morning coffee. There you go. Limited edition, those things. Yeah, I'm talking about juicing. Lori is helping me with my caffeine addiction, and she sends me really great cups 
so I can really get caffeinated in the morning. Uh, yes, and, and um, follow, on top. I follow uh, Craig's Coffee Addiction every morning online. <laughs> you can't get away with it. The guy is infatuated with taking pictures of coffee, and I, I, I love it. Agree. All right, Agree. Good. 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 All right. Let's got to have a hobby when you're in lockup. All right, I'm going to turn you all to my little drink cam. How about that? Nice. How about that? Okay. First of all, we've got to put some vodka in our big glass of ice. Now, some of you are going to measure this. I don't. I was a bartender once. You just say my dog has fleas. My dog, My dog has, has lots, food. please. <laughs> <laughs> My dog. See? <laughs> Get it? How right. many fleas does your dog have? All right. I have a big old citrus juicer in the other room, but we're going to do this with the handy dandy clampy thing. I'm there going, you go. I'm going to uh, have to squeeze it. That's Whoa, right. you are going old fashioned. I'm super old. All right, I'm going to stand up here. Get this is Glenn's going. workout for the week. Right? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, Glenn. Come I'm on. dripping. <laughs> there we go. Ready to get in the face. Got to do it. One down. Woo. One to go. <laughs> uh, this makes for great TV, by the way. It oh, does. I bet you there's some guy that squeezes oranges on YouTube that's got like five million views or something. Oh, probably. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to compete with him now. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, it depends on how much orange you like. I, uh, I tend. Ooh, that's not my garnish, but it's kind of. Weird. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna go one more half. And then I'll fill with club soda. Again, preference. I just don't like it too heavy, too sweet. Uh, but if you like your sweeter, you can go a little heavier. And if you don't have oranges to squeeze, I probably would just skip it all together. Because <laughs> 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 there's nothing like the fresh. All right. And now I'm just going to top off with a little of my soda. Keep a little bubble. Very all good, guys. Look at that. A little stir. A little stir. A little sound effect. We wait. We spare no expense bringing you this show. That is We've a got our orange cam. Yeah. We've got sound effects. Indeed. We've got Glenn, me, and special guests every week. So. There you go. All right. It's the Lori special screwdriver. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Garnish. Cheers. I forgot my garnish. Again, make it pretty. Hey, Daniel says, you're you. holding up all right. I honestly don't know, Daniel. We'll uh, yeah, we don't know. We don't know. I, I can't do a garnish because I have to have the lid on. In case Is that I really smell. coffee, so, Craig? No, <laughs> no, no. This is a very delightful, refreshing take on a screwdriver. That fresh squeezed orange juice and the club soda – with with the Tito's, best screwdriver ever. Great idea, Lori. I love it. This is nice and refreshing. This is going to be out on the patio this weekend. Mm. So, me too. The, me too. To show you the uh, the excitement that's coming up on the weekend for me, I got our favorite catalog in, Glenn, hey. Sweetwater. Yeah. So, if anybody from Sweetwater is watching, we'll be more than glad to take some free gear, and you can be a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, here's the problem with the freaking Sweetwater catalog. He goes ahead and he buys some stuff, then he makes me feel really bad about myself and super insecure. So, then I have to go some buy some gear to overcompensate, and it's really not pleasant for me. And Glenn's winning, so I got to do something. <laughs> okay, I'm a ding-dong. What is it? Oh, just all the gear that we use around here for uh, making the um, camera lights. Oh, okay. I out. thought you meant like the swag stuff that <clears throat> I gave Craig, but he hasn't given me any of. Oh, there's yours is coming. I've got an order in. It's as soon as it gets here. <laughs> you got swag coming. Just, uh, you got Lori, at least least Craig and getting the, uh, the mugs and stuff that you sent him. All the coffee related gear. What is the best piece of swag that has ever been received by the franchising community? from IHG. And what is your biggest regret when it comes to putting out a piece of swag? 
Hmm. The biggest, uh, the one that the favorite is actually what Mr. Sullivan has. The Yeti is, uh, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good one. Uh, I have, I'm sure after this, I'm going to get the, hey, can I get one? I don't have any more. No, uh, I got the very last one. You, you really there are no more. That, that was the last one I had. This um, is the last one. And okay. I don't let anybody drink out of it. It's mine. Period. <laughs> you don't share your drink. My son reaches for it. If he comes over, I swat his hand away from it. Get away from there. Don't like that. Like you have a yeah. yeah. or something like that? What, what's going on with that? <laughs> I, have I didn't hear you. The worst one. That's, I'll take me a minute. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think. So I'm going to tell a quick little anecdote, though. Um, speaking of trade shows and, you know, I call it trick or treating kind of people. Hey, what do you got? What do you yeah. got? I have four grandkids. What do you, you got? Go, yeah. You go from booth to booth. You get the, yeah. all of that junk. And then you're yeah. like, how did I get all this junk? So there's the junk, the junk tchotchke stuff. Right. And then there's the stuff like you give to the Craigs of the world that are the Yetis. We're not handing those out all the time. It, it just anything special people. Cheers, Amy. Show. Cheers, Amy. <laughs> Tanya, hello. Uh, anyway, so at one time I was at a, a travel agent trade show and a lady literally took an entire ham. Not kidding. An entire ham? Ham, yeah. Somebody was cutting ham and making like little sandwiches as like a little giveaway at their booth. Right. And wow. he reached down to get more buns and he came up and the ham was gone. <laughs> the lady put it in like this probably plastic lined purse. Wow. I, uh, now, come on. She must have been confused and thought she was in Costco, right? <laughs> yeah. True story. Wow. That, that's that pretty up. bold. Cheers. That's pretty bold. Cheers. That's a great story. Uh, I know. Um, Craig, what is, your, uh, what is your favorite thing, piece of swag that you ever got in a conference? Uh, my Avid coffee cup and my Holiday Inn Express uh, cold adult beverage cup, um, followed by my black on black playing cards. Those are pretty cool. That sounds cool. And you just happen to have them there. Just yeah, it, it's it's all about the props. Glenn's got the sound effects. I've got the props. So That's the deal. Let me see so, those. Let me see those cards again. Uh, okay, now, now I get it. <laughs> not a good idea to play cards with these in a poorly lit room. Okay, because you cannot see what what they are. <laughs> And I've got some pretty good lights going right now, and there's a six of diamonds. Wow. So that is not a, a well, or maybe it is a good drinking cards, <laughs> drinking game cards. <laughs> could be. Could be. <laughs> maybe, card dealer. maybe you get uh maybe you get Craig a deal on some cards uh over there. I uh, I used to love going out and collecting all the old playing cards and the dice from the casinos and stuff like that. There you That's go. A lot of fun. But you have to ask me, now, the best piece of swag I ever got in my entire life. Just going to ask you. Yeah. Uh, total total mistake, I think. And they were embarrassed that I got it, didn't know what to do about it, and couldn't take it back. But I walked into my hotel room once at a, at a major conference event and had a signed electric guitar from Bill Marriott in there. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty dope. You still got it? I have no idea what happened to it. That this is going back twenty years now. I don't know what happened. I wish I had something like that still. I did the hotel take it, Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> did, did the Belvin have an eye on you and said, ah, he's not getting that. <laughs> I, got it, I got it home. I just don't really remember what happened after that. Hmm. Yeah, it's really sad because I'd be a wow. memorabilia to have right about now. But, Do you play guitar? Well, I, no. 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 no, no, I am not very musical. I um, choose. I make my kids play music like the guitar, so I can live vicariously through them. I want to okay. be. My goal in life is to be one of those angry sports parents. So I, I do that with my my kids. You know, so 
you know, when they're playing guitar and stuff like that at the at the school band, if um, they play the wrong note, I get up, I scream, "What are you doing? How can you do that?" <laughs> you know that uh, sometimes I have to yell at the at the conductor, "Why aren't you calling up my son to play more guitar?" You know. <laughs> he needs more playtime. No, I've got. I mean, I got him a signed guitar from Bill Marriott for goodness' sake. <laughs> but I also have. Uh, I got enough from another hotel company. I've got a. Uh, a basketball. I still have this signed by um, all of the Harlem Globetrotters at the time. Oh, well. Back nice. years ago. That, yeah, cool. that, was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. That's, That's very cool. I, I like that. I know. That, uh, I feel really What's your worst? good about that. My worst? Yeah, you wanted a for best and worst, right? Yeah, well, for me, the worst, it's not like I didn't give away anything that sucks I don't necessarily take. But mm -hmm. um, I never understood those little like things that have a logo on it that you squish not the ball yeah which is higher quality but sometimes it's like it's do you want to be a sponge are you not a sponge i don't know what you're about <laughs> am i supposed to put this on my desk and then think of your service every time i do something i don't know what any of that is is all about so those kind of things annoy me that don't have any practical purpose so i think and i guess now we're into a we've been we're deep into a segment we didn't plan on here but um you know, what is really the perfect piece of swag to give out? And I love, Laurie, that you're doing the thing with the Yeti. Uh, my buddy Chris Green over at Chesapeake gave me one of those with their logo on it. And we use it every day because mm -hmm. it's smart, it's practical. It might be a little bit more expensive, but it really connects it in a way. As a to getting any sort of junk junk and then just uh, putting it out there. Craig, uh, what's some of the crap that you've seen maybe? You know, I, I think you're right about those sponge things. We were all at a conference not too long ago. So not last year, but the year before. And got the swag bag when I checked in. And I was reaching in for a bottle of water. And I got the little sponge thing from a lender that looked like a race car. And it went right over my shoulder and behind the booth where I just got the swag bag. So I'm not even taking this with me. It's like, no. <laughs> so that, and you know what? If you're going to give out t-shirts, there's one conference that we go to that's uh, in Lori's backyard. They give out the best t-shirts. So if you're going to give out t-shirts at a conference, make sure it's high quality. And, you know, something that isn't going to be a rag after you wash it the first time and it's shrunk down to a children's I don't remember. I don't so. remember that event itself giving out to you. Oh, I guess they give out the um, – they gave out the pulp. The wicking yeah, t-shirts. Right. Yeah. Those are pretty cool. And then you know, there's yeah. this great um, – And they're embroidered. What's that? And you need them in Arizona. <laughs> they're embroidered. Yeah. Yeah, you do need them in Arizona. It's 3,000 degrees. I got, a, I got an amazing – pullover from a uh, another hotel company that i really liked a lot that was uh that was pretty cool i still wear that one because it had the logo on it but it was subtle it's not over the top so it's a nice comfortable piece of clothing that gives them a little love but not too you don't feel weird wearing it there yeah you go. i don't want to blast to the world i like kind of the tone on tone a lot of times you'll yeah. see the logo you know um more subdued but you're more apt to wear it more often for cheapy yep. stuff, I use this one all the time. This is a USB hub. Yep. By there you go. Management. Nice. I have it on my laptop right now. So it gives me uh, four extra USB ports. Oh, and that's another thing that I hate getting. When they give you those uh, those small little rechargeable batteries, but they're really small, and then they don't really charge anything, and all they do is get <laughs> stay angry with you. Right? Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're going to give out a battery, make sure it's going to be able to put at least one full charge onto something. All right, so everybody over there, since we're talking about swag, what's the what do you think is the most effective piece of swag that you've ever seen uh, out there? This really made you say, these guys are cool. These guys are creative. They got it going on. So let us know over there in there. So um, maybe it's uh, maybe it's time to move on a little bit. So, uh, Laurie, um, yes. you, you travel an awful lot for business, yeah. don't you? I do. Uh, what? The, what? Uh, how often are you on the road? And I'm curious as to, are you comfortable when you go on vacation, or do you still think you're traveling for business? And how does that work out for you? <laughs> um, well, in a quote normal world, 
I would normally travel weekly, uh, some, you know, a few days off here and there, not off, but, you know, back at home to, to do follow up and that kind of stuff. So try to keep it to, uh, you know, three days out and two nights so I can have some time to get that stuff done. Um, during, you know, pandemic 2020, uh, not a lot in the beginning, started doing a little bit towards the end of the summer. Um, yeah. And then we kind of got more in the swing of it. Um, we've been cautious to, to get back out there um, for good reason, of course. And everybody has a, a different threshold, you know, about whether or not they, they feel comfortable. And um, IHG has, you know, put no pressure if, you, if you're if you comfortable, fine. And if you're not, that's okay. So um, there's no pressure to do it one way or the other. It's what wow. your comfort level is. My personal comfort level is I get really uncomfortable when I'm not traveling. So <laughs> I've, been, <laughs> I've been traveling a lot. Um, but a personal too, like I, I um, sucked it up. I went over to Hawaii. It was so hard in oh, December oh, um, for fun. And um, I was a little worried that I wasn't. Was that hot? I'm going to go to Hawaii. I have to go to Hawaii. <laughs> sucked it up. Uh, but no, it was, I mean, they, they still have travel restrictions and that they were, I wasn't sure I was even going to be able to go, but luckily airline and um, yes, I was staying in an Airbnb because a lot of the hotels were closed and I wasn't sure that I would be able to stay at one. <laughs> so, and plus a bunch of the restaurants were closed too. Actually, most of them were. So I wasn't sure, you know, f food wise, I might need to cook. So I booked a, a a condo and um, they were very understanding about canceling to the last minute too. So um, I was able to jump through all the hoops and get my test 72 hours prior right. uploaded, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was rewarded with a very uncrowded Maui. Yeah. yeah. So I See, now, speaking Sorry. of Maui, Glenn, yeah. you know, I've known Lori for nine years and she didn't pick up the phone and go, Craig, can I use your place? And I would have gone, Lori, please, <laughs> no problem. Go stay at my house. I got a beautiful crescent-shaped beach 100 yards from my front door. Now so everybody next time, else Lori, knows you that, let too. Me know. <laughs> yeah, but they don't know me. You do. So, just like Glenn. I told Glenn. Yeah, Careful what you wish for. So uh, Peter, uh, Peter said they gave out uh, hand sanitizer. It was really neat with all that handshaking. That was always a good one. I like that one. Uh, Dan mm -hmm. is totally practical. I was like swag I could bring home to my daughter. It might, not, it might not sit at my desk, but some of it is still around years later. So for a number of years, um, my buddy, uh, my buddy Sean Worker, with whom uh, we put out this book, The Adapters, get it right now. Look at that, my name on an actual book right there. Buy it right now at Amazon.com. Anyway, after you're done buying it on Amazon.com. Uh, when I was working with them over at Bridge Street Global Hospitality doing their thing called Here to Stay TV, I'd go with them to do all these great video interviews at conferences overseas, all around Europe and stuff. They had the coolest thing. They did. Um, they had their own like bear that was their mascot, right? And yeah. they had the bear thing at the booth. So oh, that's kind of cool. Wow. Was making build a bears with the Bridge Street bear and then taking it home for their kids, just like uh, Dan is saying would be a, a, a great. You know, it was a great gift. So yeah. I think that was a pretty, pretty, pretty solid one. Uh, Amy, yeah, she's, rack, she's racking her brain. She remember really good swag. I know. Why spend all of the money if people aren't going to remember what you are giving them? Better to give them nothing than to give them something that you're just wasting your money on is going to wind up in the garbage or not, or, you know, yeah. worse yet. I feel like poor housekeeping, they get more crappy swag. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it may, it makes it back to the office, Glenn, and you give it to your admin. Uh, they're just happy to get anything because they typically don't. I thought you were going to say so. you take like all the koosh balls put in the closet, and then it'll be like the troubles the triple trouble with triples episode where exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's a good idea too. <laughs> so, Lori, you just had a vacation. What was it like? Just packing to go on vacation and, and be out there. Which vacation? What was that like for you? <laughs> so I've been tacking days on to my trips too. So um, yeah. like Glenn was saying, you know, is how do you really um, unplug or not unplug? And I think, um, I think we're going to see more of that, you know, moving forward. We, you're, you're already, Leisure. we were seeing a lot of that, that hybrid uh, trip yeah. bef before pandemic. 
but um, even more so now. So um, it was crowded. Um, all of the flights I have been on in the last three weeks have been yeah. crowded to That's the tune. Um, I came back yesterday from Fresno and they were taking volunteers to wow. get up your seat. They were oversold. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Uh, um, yesterday we had 1.56 million travelers go through TSA in 2019. That was 2.4 million. So we're still off 900,000 moving in the right direction. Much yeah. better than last year when 124,000 total people went through. Wow. So thank wow. God we're headed in the right direction. But Lori, is there anything like um, anything differently you do when you're on vacation first when you're on, on work and business? Like for me, like I wind up going to bed at ten when I'm on vacation, rather than going out at uh, at ten p.m. is one thing. I'm also, <laughs> I'm also relieved that I don't have to run out to places like Target to get breakfast while everybody's sleeping in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Trips, and of course, one thing I don't have to worry about when I'm work when I travel for work for leisure is I don't have to endure going through TSA and then seeing my wife set up the alarm so that water I told her to get rid of five seconds before. So, uh huh. I, I, you know, I find there's a lot of these things that happen when I, uh, when I travel, you know, for leisure versus mm -hmm. work. Although I got to tell you, Craig, I was really off my game traveling to Florida this week for work, and I, I didn't know what was what. I felt like I wasn't clear on the, on, on the, uh, on this. Uh oh, uh oh, breaking news. Back. Hey, <laughs> is back. <laughs> I'm back, and I got my big drink of water. And you're in a new location. Yes, I am in the basement. So like, you guys have a great view of my view. It looks like you're in the, the, the cooler with um, Jack Torrance with the dining room. <laughs> well, honestly, anybody who's ever been into you know working in a New York City hotel, especially a newer New York City hotel, knows that all this space in my office is actually pretty good. I'm sitting pretty. That's cool. You just need a drink. Uh, well... I'll have to be on with the water today, and then I'll catch up. I'll catch up tonight. There you go. There you go. I think uh, I think I'm having a little little tech error over here. Hold on one second, everybody. All right. See what I'm saying? I leave for one half an hour of one show, and it falls apart. I know. I know. I know. I know. Amy, Daniel, uh, Suzanne, nobody kept them in check. Carol. <laughs> I know. Sorry. But, you know, well, and now Craig's gone. Oh. <laughs> Craig, did you do that on purpose? <laughs> Not me. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, oh, we a we go out. All right. Uh, so you guys are so this. So this I'll be right, right back. Yeah, it, looked like back. The, uh, it looked like the LinkedIn feed was screwed up there for a second or so. So you know. I, I panicked. I don't understand what's going on with Craig, why he decided to go like that. Oh, it's just like Groundhog did. Dave comes back <laughs> over and over again. I accept I don't know if this is I know, happen. Daniel. It's very tough to keep them in check. Trust me. I did it for a year. It was impossible. It has all these gray hairs I have now. I was young and beautiful last year, and all of a sudden working with uh, with Glenn has, has changed me. To be fair, Dave was young. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't throw me into that conversation. <laughs> no, 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 Craig. You're, you're, you send me good gifts, so you're okay with me. Because opening a hotel won't give you the gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> You'll have my pen. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, Lori, we, I talk about this every week, and I'm not going to stop until everyone knows what kind of person Glenn really is. But I met Craig about two or three weeks prior to me getting my new job. I've known Glenn for two years prior to me getting my new job. Craig sent me this gift. Craig sent me this gift. I don't know much, how much Glenn sent me. None. Well, Absolutely nothing. Monday, motherfucker. I wouldn't even see you Monday, though. Unless you're going to come over to 33rd to 44th Street. I thought you were going to dinner with us on Monday night. What are you oh, that's right, Monday night. That's right. See, I already blocked you guys out of my mind. Sorry. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> what? You've been bigger and better things. So I get where you're uh, where you're coming from, Dave. So I'm sitting here just squeezing an orange in case everybody's uh, wondering what I'm up to. I know. I decided that I would start my refill early, even though. David, I'm not do you want to tell them why you got a red pen? Uh, yeah. Why I got a I like red you. pen? Yeah. This is the crimson red pen. Crim. Yeah. Oh, uh, you want to tell them why you got that color? I would love to know myself. 
I told you when I sent it to you. Because if he ever loans it to anybody and he gets distracted oh, yeah, and they walk true. off with it, he can see it from across the room. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That was a very limited edition in that crimson That's true. Rat. Greg did say that. Honestly, Craig, like I said, I literally, as the psychopath that I am, pack it up every night. So nice. there's nobody like walking that. away with there's I nobody like walking that. away with it. It's packed up and in my bag every night. It's secure. I cherish this uh, this pen. Unlike Glenn's friendship, I don't cherish that at all. <gasps> you know, oh. I, I got a great piece of Friday night on a swag coming your way too, very shortly. So we're gonna get you to start singing a different tune. Is it the uh, is it the official Grumpy Glenn, Grumpy Glenn merch? No, it is not. Although uh, we will have to get to that. But we'll get to that. After the commercial break, maybe we should take a commercial break right now. Take a, there we go. Take a look back in the past. Some great ads. We'll be back here in just one minute's time. Refill your drink. Out of just to the bathroom. Whatever you need to do, just be back here in one second. Come be together at Disney. Operation Pushpin. You've made us one of the most popular economy motel chains, so we're expanding. Putting more clean, comfortable in across the nation. So wherever you see one of these, uh oh. Call 1 800 The Roof for reservations and new locations. Sorry. Not, not funny. I used to love. I love Martin Mull. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's me. Maybe that humor doesn't hold up. But I, I, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I remember that commercial. I, I, I found it very funny. So <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, Dave. You say uh, New York coming coming back, and uh, something's going on in Tribeca. They got that film festival and stuff that's going to be. Yeah, you know, every, you know, they have this little little film festival they do every year. It's like one or two films come out. Nobody really pays any attention to it. You know, it's only the Tribeca Film Festival, Glenn. And uh, there was some good minor, news. Minor festival. There was some good news that they are bringing it back with in person viewings uh, early June. So nice. uh, I think that's going to be the first kind of major New York City event that's back in person attendance. And that's obviously major, major news. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly we'll, I would hope will be a big help. I don't know. If there's an, I'm sure there's going to be capacity limitations. I don't know the full details about the opening, but the fact that they're even doing it with in person viewings is, is just major, in my opinion. Wow. That's hey, uh, pretty awesome. David, how does that impact? Your hotels and the surrounding ones. Are, are you guys anticipating you know, you're going to be well, sold out the whole time? Or I'm not. I'm not really in that area. As well, in Manhattan. Be. That's more. That's more lower. Lower West Side. Lower West Side. Okay. Um. So, but the you know the hotels around Tribeca, World Trade Center area, they may see some bump from that. Again, it really depends on how many people are allowed to come. You know, is it only going to be you know actors and directors and producers and their kind of close friends and family? Uh, but Sarah has worked that event back in the day as Glenn takes it off before I can finish reading it. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Sarah. When no she was 20 years old. That's awesome, Sarah. That's a really cool that story. Cool. <laughs> I just want to show off some of my incredible producing skills. You can watch every day on uh, No Vacancy Lives. And, uh, Dave's got a full-time job. You know? so, uh, but yeah, Craig, that's not gonna, I don't think that's going to reach up to me, but you know, it's definitely going to have some kind of impact down in the Tribeca area. So we are... Uh, uh, before we were talking about a uh, great, uh, great swag embroidered bag room, uh, bag of room amenities, uh, reminds me of their gorgeous bar and restaurant, which reminds me, Laurie, I've got great swag from uh, a company called Six Continents Hotels. I've got a uh, got a great bag there. Um, I've got uh, Intercontinental Hotels and Resorts uh, bag. I've got uh, oh, there's what are some of the other names that the companies had? Um, yes. Oh yeah, Bass. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 That's the first one that I uh, I remember when they when they yeah. came in. 
Do you still have your priority club card? When it was your social security number? Wow. Do you remember that? Wow. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I forgot all about that. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so when oh I was in God. college, uh, before I bartended, <laughs> uh, I worked front desk at a Holiday Inn, and that was when it was all your social security number. That's amazing. Can you believe that? That's amazing. That was, That's amazing. Yeah. That was now was uh, was. This is before I mean, I'm, I'm assuming before the age of computers because oh. I was I was barely around. You're, you're I was very barely kind. Around <laughs> yes. But uh, was 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 identity theft as big as it is now? It is that, even, nobody even no, that wasn't no. even a term no. yet. We were yeah. busy still yeah. being afraid of hitchhikers instead of like now just getting in the cars with strangers through an app. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally, totally different world. Well, do you guys remember that that when they had that when LifeLock first came out, the the founder was like promoting his real social security yeah. saying it's so secure that even i'll do it and he got Here's caught like five yeah, or yeah, six yeah. times yeah of course yeah. he did because you can't life lock anything now uh and now allegedly 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 their ads have a lot of disclaimers in it that basically say you know whatever you know it don't if it doesn't work then what are you gonna do about it Sarah, Sarah, I, I'm also before the age of computers, okay? I remember my huge big box computer with the dial-up modem and the little ski-free game on Windows 95. I'm not exactly a, a newbie newbie around here, okay? okay? The fact that you said you 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 were here in the pre-computer and then you described your computer uh, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a little different. Craig's, uh, Craig's first computer was actually an ENIAC. That's uh, that's how far he goes back. No, it was an abacus. Do you remember the table tennis with the little boom? boom yeah, boom, pong, pong. pong. Yeah, was, uh, that was really fun. I loved, I loved pong. You know, it's like you, you know, the kids of today, they didn't know what we had. You know, it's like they, we were spoiled. It's like, like that's like our walking uphill both ways to school type of thing. You know, we had pong and we hit the ball back and forth, and we were happy with that. You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Or that little handheld football game. It was like the very first one to come out. There you go. Out with the white one. With the little lines. Yeah. The little, little red lines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God, that's funny. That's funny. I had well, to if you yep, go on. Craig. I'm going to say what? if you recall, Atari almost bankrupt Warner Brothers when Warner Brothers acquired them and their stock fell below $5 a share. And I jumped on that stock because I firmly believe that every entertainment company has its day other than MGM UA. Right. There, no, no reason to buy that stock ever. So I hung on to that stock through the 70s, 80s, 90s and beyond. When, and I unloaded it when uh, they bought AOL. I said, this is not good. I'm getting out now. <laughs> so I uh, you know, made a ton of money off of that. When my son was born in 81, I bought him Disney stock that is split several times, and he's got a ton of that. And unfortunately, the one that I bought him that I really liked was Marvel, but they went bankrupt. Their annual statement used to come in the form of a comic book. It was hysterical. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. How cool yeah. is that? Atari Hotel is still in the works for multiple locations, Vegas and I think Phoenix, yeah. right? I think. Yeah. Wait, what, Sarah, type in the comments, what was your first AO, uh, AIM screen name? I want to see this. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you guys were doing aim or not when uh, that was the big I think thing, but there were some good ones out there. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I remember doing that for sure. All right. Um, I, I think Sarah's doing her due diligence. Yeah, for she as, she as she's on the uh, show. I'm just kind of spaced out there for a second. Uh, there's also a 30 second delay, so uh, you know that's that kind of happens too. But I think right now might be a time to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. So, um, I want to. Uh, I think I'm ready. Make a note of that, David. I think I'm ready to complain about something, guys. I've had enough news. Um, I'm ready to go at it. So, uh, just a little warning for everybody. A little spoiler alert for uh, episode number one of the uh, Falcon and. All right. So.
So I'm a little, uh, I'm a little pissed. And there are many things that I can overlook when it comes to the movies, right? You got space travel, you got super villains, you got things that defy the law of physics, the destruction of major global landmarks in every single movie. But I cannot handle that in episode one of the Falcon and Winter Soldier that uh, Sam the Falcon is having mortgage issues. First, a little disclaimer there. I probably think they're trying to tell a story about society and like equity and all of that kind of stuff. But, but still, seriously. How can an Avenger be in danger of losing the family home and business when he is literally friends with billionaires? Pepper Pot, what is wrong with you? You're out there too busy selling candles that smell like your private parts to help a man in need? <laughs> no reward money for literally helping save half of mankind from a supervillain? What about Captain Marvel? What's she up to? She can't conjure up some boat repairs to this guy? What is going on over there? I don't know. What he could have made some money with a little bit of effort. I'm making money on speaking gigs. Can he do some speaking gigs, right? How about he goes and signs some autographs at that mall connecting Mandalay Bay with Luxor? Pete Rose has been doing it for 20 years. Sit next to him, make some extra cash. Speaking of Las Vegas, why don't you just dress like yourself out there on the strip, take some pictures with people? Tons of fake superheroes out there making lots of cash. Why can't you? Why not launch the Falcon breakfast cereal? How about selling rights to a toy line? Hawk some products for company. Sorry. I mean, Falcon some products for company. And finally, Did dude. Lose Glenn? Did Glenn grumpy himself out? Oh, no, dude. How about finally a GoFundMe page? None of these things. Easy ideas that I just came up with. I don't know what's going on with that. Craig, did you see this show? I did. And, you know, I agree with all your points, but one, instead uh -oh. of Vegas, he should be with the other Avengers and DC superheroes in front of man's Chinese theater and across the street from Jimmy Kimmel. Right. I mean, come on. I mean, seriously, easy, easy way well, to get some cash yeah. over there. Yeah. I mean, Craig just told yeah. us how much money he made on the Warner Brothers stock. Greg, break him off a few. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, I got a grandson I got to put through college. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hopefully on this uh, now that's a whole pricing thing. Hopefully on the show they'll bring it together and all of that kind of stuff. And I do wish Sam and his family the uh, the best. I hope they get their business strained out. But yeah. come on, the spending hundreds of million, hundreds of million dollars on this TV show. They couldn't throw him a couple of bucks for uh, for a, you know for a little help over there. I don't understand. <laughs> eh, whatever. Hey, um, Batman took care of uh, the Kent farm. Come on, <laughs> he bought the bank. <laughs> oh, Glenn, you need a vacation. Lori, 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 are you are you regretting coming on this show yet? Because I regret being on this every week. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm going into like friend mode of like, how can I help Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> I love that she said he's so grumpy. Yeah. Oh, grumpy Glenn. I, grumpy I was Glenn. on a tangent earlier today, so you know, I get tangents. <laughs> All right, so. With any luck, uh, my wife, who I just saw pulling into the driveway, has brought me home my favorite popcorn from uh, the local grocery store. It's got that amazing movie theater taste to it. Because yeah. we're going to watch Kong vs. Godzilla tonight, me and uh, me and the teenage boys. So we're very, very excited about that. I'm very cool. Who's going to win? I've got I've got a hunch, but I don't want to I, I don't want to take a gamble. Well, there you guys go. If you you know if viewers out there, put it I'm in the with, comments. I'm going with Kong. Who do you, who do you guys have? So Lori's going with Kong. Craig? I'm going to go with Godzilla. Godzilla. Glenn, you're the tiebreaker. I'll go with Kong because I think it'll be a feel-good story. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because he has more he's more soft and warm in personality. And Godzilla's just Godzilla, kind of mean. I know. You want him to win. Oh, right. All right, so you're right, uh, Peter. He, he should be eligible eligible for a PPP loan. Like they didn't have any yeah. other programs when half the world comes back and everybody's out of work and stuff like that. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> the whole thing is just frustrating to me, guys. I don't know. What I don't know. You're, you're punching holes in that whole scenario. <laughs> I tried watching one of the Godzilla films in the last couple of years, but they were so freaking boring. I'm just hoping there's lots of monster fights in this movie. You know, Glenn, you're, you, you're talking about this, this streaming show reminds me of what we talked about. Maybe we should ask the audience to chime in. Should Glenn and I 
do a show on travel, tech, and entertainment so that we could give our reviews on all of the above. So do Glenn and I a favor and uh, put that in the comments below and we'll uh, – We'll check that out, and I'm sure we're going to disappoint some of you, and we'll do a I'm show. I'm so. disappointing as many people as, uh, as possible out there. Dave's, yeah. Dave's perpetually disappointed. He wishes he'd... <laughs> but, but, Craig, uh, you know, when when you're talking about these uh, th these things, I mean, I promise everybody, it won't be me complaining the way I just complained. It'll be really good, oh, honest... No review no. about all the well, I was right. waiting to hear like go around the, the ramen here what's what's Craig's peeve or what's he want to what's he want to be grumpy about <laughs> <laughs> and then Dave you can chime in with yours <laughs> I just want to go to go to Maui that's that's that's, that's really go. it right now I want to pack up my son and his family my grandkids and take a test. my daughter-in-law go to Hawaii so but I get my first shot next week so we're getting oh, ready really? I get my second one in two Mondays, I think. Nice. Three Mondays. Nice. Three Mondays so. I, I got my first one yesterday, and now I'm reflexively checking my arm to see if it still hurts. <laughs> I had Is it both. all bruised? Oh. Ooh, hey, good for you, Laura. Nice. Good for you, Laura. Did you get sick after the second one? Uh -uh. No, my arm was sore on both, but uh, no. I was, uh, and I did Pfizer. That's what I got, too. Yeah. I'm holding out hope, then. I don't want to get sick. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no bueno. That is right. Grumpy is not in Christ's uh, vocabulary. Very true. Come on, there you go. <laughs> very, very true. I'm not grumpy. Jovial, jovial, jovial. Every time I look at Craig, I think of Father Mulcahy from Mass. Joke <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. No Irish jokes. Hey, by the way, you went Dave, Irish the other week. We changed his name. Uh, yeah. Is that I was just explaining to you, Dave, that MASH was a show that used to be on. Oh, yeah. See, that's the problem with this show for me is like 99% of the time I'm sitting here like, what? And then, then, they play what? These, then, they, then they play these commercials, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> so Back in the day, David, there only used to be broadcast television. And every 15 minutes, there were commercials. What's That's a commercial? how they paid for the shows. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Yeah, God. so whenever you guys see me just kind of staring into space with that doofy smile on, it's because I have no clue what they're talking about. <laughs> you really got to get back with 70s, 80s pop culture references, dude, you know? So that you, yeah. you want me to, you basically want me to talk no at no point during the show. All right, can I tell you guys a, a quick story about an '80s reference, Glenn? I've, I've told you this story before. Maybe you've told, maybe you've even told on the show. I don't even know. Right. right. But uh, when I was working at uh, one of the hotels in Newark Airport, and I was trying to keep it short, but uh, there was a guy outside the front looking very anxious. I went to ask him how you know what was going on, if I could help him, uh, and he told me that the the van that was picking up his equipment, his his person's equipment. Uh, was late and they want the timing to be perfect. Yes, Sarah. Yes, absolutely. They want the timing to be perfect because they don't want they don't, he doesn't want his person to be outside the front for too long, so there's no autographs or pictures. Okay, no problem. I find out where the van is. I come back, and I say, okay, um, you know that's on the way here. But if there's a problem, you know, I can take uh, the person out the back. Who is it? And he goes, oh, it's uh, Pat Benatar. And I say, okay, so should I take him out the back door? <laughs> And <laughs> the guy looks the guy oh, looks like, God. no, I think it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's <laughs> funny. This is Morton Downey Jr. show. Uh, Dave, that was like the uh, the first of the crazy-ass talk shows that were on where they had yeah. people on to yell at each other. Sarah, can we dress up in like 90s and eat like 90s snacks like Gushers and Dunkaroos and just kind of really like have Glenn and – uh, Craig having no clue what was going on. It's kind of like last week when we were, when we were talking we about drinking games. We have no clue games. anyhow. So, you it's know. like last week when me and, me and uh, Danny were talking about drinking games in college, and you guys had no idea. You guys, we played quarters. Well, I mean, quarters was like a staple. 
Uh, I mean, I, I'm not it saying still is, fun, right? But it is actually a pretty. Oh wait, there's game. a chain shortage. Uh, uh, don't worry, Craig and, I, Craig and I will play all of our favorite Andrew's sister songs from 1940 to even it out for you guys. There we go. Yeah. So, um, Sarah's Dana, down. I will. I'll tell you a quick little story, somewhat similar to yours. I used to work at the uh, front desk at a Hyatt here in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it was Labor Day weekend, and we had massive check-ins and. You know, you're you're just going through the numbers and just trying to plow through the line of people and still make a little small talk, right? So this guy comes up and, and he says he's checking in, and um, and I say last name and and he says Cooper, and I'm typing it in and it pulls up and and you know again making small talk, haha. I'm like, well, you don't look like an Alice. An Alice, oh shit. Alice Cooper's in front of me. <laughs> That's funny. See, and that one I knew. Oh, see? See, I'm in, I can laugh for real now at that one. I and like he that. lives there too, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. His yeah. air conditioning yeah. was out, so he brought the kids uh, to the pool for the weekend. Mascara That's was awesome. running. <laughs> That's a good. That's one. Yeah, I've had. I've had those ones. You just kind of look up, like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh my god, <laughs> too funny, right. guys. Speaking of being too funny, I can't believe that our hour is almost up. But before, oh, Jesus, I know, I know, and, and I only got one and a half drinks in. And thank you for honoring Passover with a, a Moses reference. We'll let you Christians out there have your little Easter on Sunday. Oh yeah, Good Fridays today. Happy Good Friday, everybody. Uh, it's I, great I, Friday. Friday. I, after the show, people are not going to say it was a good Friday. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad hurt. you said that because I was thinking it. <laughs> I'm hurt. You know what? I agree, Lori. I think I think Lori. No, I think that you and I should start our own show. It's and I. It's not you, Lori. The guests Shot are always through the heart, and, and you're to you. blame. <laughs> <laughs> I will say. Being um being under this quarantine for so long, I totally miss Ash Wednesday, the uh the, the one day of the year where I look at everybody and I'm flummoxed by why everybody has something on their forehead. <laughs> what the, what the fuck? <laughs> I know, one of these days this year. Amy's right. <laughs> yes, Amy. Well, let's see. I, I want to see this story. I'm going to read this, Sarah. Let's see. Sarah, who is, by the way, one of the best concierges in the world. So let me tell you, she has a bunch of stories that I'm sure she could tell, but probably never will. Uh, but she one time told the guy who she thought was a lame Johnny Depp impersonator, only to find out it was actually Johnny Depp. <laughs> nice. Was he dressed up like a pirate? <laughs> well, he would have been the cool Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp then, I'm guessing. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. <laughs> exactly, Amy. Sarah. <laughs> you Sarah, think, you think can love some, about uh, you. Somebody Sarah, got my phone. Look at that. Yeah, stories, I love it. Uh, that you can share yeah. next week. I want to hear some of those juicy LA concierge stories that are are, are safe to share. <laughs> I gotta go. No, no, no. We want the dangerous <laughs> stories. I've always had that impulse, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I used to do that with my neighbors. I'd come walking over to them with my thumb out like I was going to wipe it off, and they'd automatically start backing up, going, no, 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 don't do that. Were you giving him the sign of the cross instead? There yeah. you go, Craig. No, I was just trying to wipe I, it I off. He was dressing up pirate. Yeah, I don't, feel, I don't too feel too guilty about all that because I've had to explain Yom Kippur to the same people over and over and over and over again throughout my life. So it's no big deal. All right. Happy thank you, Mark. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. I think it's time for the, the, the one reason why every one of you tune in each and every week. Of course, I'm talking about... Laurie, 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 you came into the gauntlet. You succeeded. You made it way through. You still may have a job come Monday. You might have put yourself shamelessly as possible. Oh, gosh. You know... Uh... <laughs> No, oh, I love to work with everybody. Come, come build hotels. Come give me a call. Wow, I'm in the sun the You want to come here? Wow, wow, you got to build a hotel. Can right? we make that a tagline for the company? Yeah, right? I hate like, hotels. Be the come person who's hotels. running into the fire instead of the people running away. Come build hotels. Uh, Lori, what's going to be the next name for IHG? Oh, that's a good one. Hashtag we build hotels. <laughs> I have what about your uh, mini hotel? 
Oh, micro combo. Yeah, that's a new thing that we're doing um, for small markets. Right. We are doing a hotel that is half avid and half candlelit uh, with that, one yeah. lobby. And uh, why I say small markets is it makes sense, you know, where you wouldn't necessarily build a full avid and build a full candlewood, but um, half and half makes sense. Um, and it doesn't really work that well in the big cities because we hopefully will be doing both of them at a full size. So works really well in uh, some of those smaller tertiary markets. Uh, to Shout out to you know, Sweet, by the way, my first ever hotel job. Nice. What was? Candlewood? Candlewood, Candlewood. Oh, there you go. Candy. 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 Nice, nice thing about that, Lori, is uh, there are special government programs through the Department of Agriculture as well that's a high-bred yeah. uh, SBA loan for those type of projects. Okay. And if you also incorporate a green component, you can get even more money. So I... Brilliant on on your guys' part. I, I love this idea. Yeah, Craig, I was a little confused when you first said micro combo. I thought you were talking about what uh, when I had a little sexy time with the wife last week. <laughs> yes, the other one, I am so glad I'm on the left coast. You are in so much trouble when you get off the air. <laughs> more of it, that was more of a joke about myself. Right? Nice. <laughs> New name. As always, uh, Amy, you know. I'm sorry, sorry. Amy's asking any more plans for more Voco brands. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I don't personally sell Voco, but yes, it, it it has a very aggressive growth schedule coming out. I would highly recommend uh, Holiday Inn Express, right, Lori? Is that what I should? Holiday Inn Express is, you know, it's the bread and butter. It it. it is the big machine. Trying to, trying um, to sell some franchises for you. Which ones? Which ones? Learn? Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> well, she built, she built hotels. So, uh, <laughs> right. No, Holiday Inn Express, I mean, it's it's a classic and it does fantastic. Um, it it is in, it works well in tertiary. It works well in a downtown environment. Um, it can go leisure. It can go corporate. You know, it's very versatile. Um, Avid, which we introduced a couple years back, is designed to kind of take that space where, you know, Holiday Inn Express kind of grew up into the next category up over over time. And Avid is sliding right under it and taking, taking its place. So nice. um, you're going to see a lot, a lot of growth with Avid. We already have 30 of them open. We have another 200 behind that with sign signed executed licenses but a, a bunch of them are already through plan review a bunch of them are already ground broke it's a uh, there's a big train coming when you sign a deal why would you want to execute them that seems like really hard too much of a no vacancy show for my taste if you guys want to have Lori's <laughs> expert opinions and expert content we need to schedule our monday through thursday this is friday thank you very much. <laughs> i was just gonna say uh good tuesdays and thursdays already. with click connect Good luck with that Holiday Inn Express brand. I haven't heard of it. I wish you luck. Maybe you'll. Oh, man. You need to stay you know, smart, he says, man. He, he wants to say that, but everybody that watches. But you did stay at Holiday Inn Express last night. Everybody that watches this show watches No Vacancy. And everybody that knows that Holiday Inn Express is no vac uh, is uh, Glenn's co host number one favorite brand. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, great promotion every every almost every day at No Vacancy. Yes, yes, yeah. I have seen that. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, but there's lots of weird uh, terminologies in this industry, like when we refer to a transient hotel, people look at like you're talking about like homeless or something. <laughs> but it's like this word that we all throw around. It's a hotel that moves from location to location every single, you know. Yeah. Uh, Dave, Actually, have a good point for yourself, uh, I, think, I think one of my competitors started doing some of those pop-up hotels at like Coachella and stuff. That, that's a pretty cool idea. That's I won't a, name names. No, I name them. Um, just one of my competitors. Uh, that's, that's good enough. <laughs> um, so for me, yep, yeah, for me, you know, same as always, no vacancy live again. I've been saying this for a couple of days. Next Monday, like two or three days from now. You have to watch. You will not believe where we're broadcasting from. I will not. Be, I can't believe that I won't be there. So uh, I'm jealous, even though you know. Uh, I don't know are you going to go into Maui to to Craig's condo? 
No, no it's even uh, better. One of the, no, one it's not. Of, we might be broadcasting from one of the most well-known locations on the entire planet. But we'll find out. Tune in Monday at noon to find out. Dave, you're working at the uh, Even Midtown in New York City. How can we find you guys on Instagram? New York City. Uh, you can go to <laughs> Even Midtown NYC. Check it out on Instagram. We're posting up a lot of the great stuff that we're doing. Like us, follow us, and of course, uh, stay here. Uh, yes, this Monday, Carol. This Monday, Ken, I don't like Vinny's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, first of all. Ken I'm Patel. I'm Ken, try to do it, David. Here we please. go. Ken Patel is one of the most esteemed people. Right now, uh, Craig's upset that he cut all of his. And lots of love <laughs> And you are doing And this is my this is my I just cleaned a hotel all day hair. Wait till you see next Friday when I'm actually like have my hair done halfway decent. <laughs> there you go. Boom. Oh, Sarah, not the White House. They will never let me in there after the unpleasantness the last time. <laughs> so, Glenn, is it within the United States? Yes. Huh? Yes, it is in the U.S. Right. But that's it. We're not saying any more. I'll just I'll say you have No, you're not saying any more. Let's Producer Davis, right put his foot down. <laughs> He's getting put, kicked off the show because he's not saying anymore. Uh, you have to shoot. You have to tune in Monday at twelve to any of the different channels. You will not believe we're broadcasting from. In fact, I can we confirmed it today, so it will be happening. Sarah, don't you understand? It's not that Dave has great hair. It's that that this is happening. This is happening here, and I'm sad and I'm jealous of his gorgeous youth. Well, that's why you pull it forward. Yeah, I don't know, Carol. I don't know. You're going to have to tune in on Monday. All right, Craig. <laughs> have a good day with hey, you, buddy. Yeah, you know what? Lori and you will both be at Click 5 live and in person October 5th at the Crown Jewel, the Anaheim Resort area of the JW Marriott. So get that contract signed on our stage with Lori. <laughs> On October 5th. I like how you it, think so. That'd be pretty hey, cool. Uh, we hit a milestone on LinkedIn. One of our shows was in the top 1% of everything being viewed on LinkedIn. So I want to thank my audience for that. That's not this uh, program. We're in the bottom 1%. With the it keeps me humble. Let's all give say? credit where was credit is Was that when you due. interviewed me? That's so cool. It was. <laughs> it was. And we had sound issues. Mm -hmm. so, and they still uh, Just imagine us. what would have happened. We have to give credit where credit is due. Great job, Danny. Way to take care and push Craig forward. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. For sure. Lori, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for in entertaining me with my lovely great, great. screwdriver. There's great a restaurant here cup. in Phoenix that calls this vodka with pulp. I like that. Oh, yeah. oh, oh if I would have known that this morning, it would have been in the in the uh, ad. The orange cam, even better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh uh, we had lots of lots of tasty cocktails tonight. I want to thank everybody for being here. On the Friday night, yeah. we'll be back next week with uh, the incredible Sarah Dan. She can't wait to have her on this show. I didn't do an official plug, but I did it earlier. Come on, hook me up, hook a brother up. Buy the adapters, go to the adapters.net, learn more. Lots of great content beyond the book. Yes, Craig. I want to ask producer David a question. Sure. I've checked my mailbox every day. I haven't gotten my free autographed copy. Have you gotten yours? Please. I mean, couldn't even get a pen from Glenn. I don't have any fucking copy. I'm to buy that shit off of Amazon myself. I still haven't gotten any copies here yet. <laughs> you think I'm going to get a book? I couldn't even get a, a, a pen or a notepad from Glenn. All right, Dave. When you, when you email me, you, you send me your address. Oh, I'll get Dave, I got a hand solo in car, but I killed See, pain. Glenn. So now yeah. even Lori's giving me some some some, some congratulations. Yeah. Lori's got you great know, swag. Do this. One of these bad boys coming to you on Monday. We got some Friday night Onyx swag, a very special thing that I purchased coming to you soon. Ah. Hang tight. We will totally <laughs> reverse course here with this. All right, everybody. I can't deal with this anymore. I feel like I'm. My what about the Grumpy Glen T-shirts? Yeah, get some. Where can, you, where can you find the Grumpy Glen T-shirts? Red. On the Aloha Craig store on Red, Red Bubble. All right, everybody. Thanks for dealing with us this week. Really appreciate you. 
You all deserve a fucking medal for being here this long. I don't know what to tell you. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week for another episode. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Lori. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.